Hey everybody, welcome back to Canucks Course Critiques. It's been a while since I've done this. I've fallen quite a bit behind on them. Uh, but uh, today on Twitter, I asked uh, if anyone would like a critique, and I got a whole flood of responses. So uh, I'm going to pick one, and uh, we're going to play it. We're going to play Kimono Dunes. And Kimono Dunes is from It's underscore Luxurious on Twitter. So I've taken a quick look uh, just to kind of see if this falls into what I would consider to be a good video. Um, so it's really kind of a certain type of course that's going to make these videos the best, I feel. So uh, there's tons of these course showcase videos on YouTube where people are showing off the best of the best courses. We're not doing that here, okay? Uh, no offense to Kimono Dunes. But uh, those don't really need any critiquing or feedback. Yeah, they'll be nitpicky things, but they know for the most part how the designer works and how to make what we would say a tour-worthy course over on TGC Tours. Um, I'm also not looking for a course that was built in a week and you just bought the game a week ago. Obviously, you're still very new and working on, you know, how to use the designer. So I'm looking for something in the middle. Maybe if you were over on TGC Tours and you submitted it and it got approved and maybe it's not quite into the tour-worthy echelon yet, this would be a great... Uh, course I think for one of my videos and maybe if your course wasn't approved or maybe it was right on the borderline uh, that would also be a good one so kind of that's what we're going to be looking at for uh, for these videos so uh, like I said we're going to start with Kimono Dunes uh, who am I like people my, some people new people the channel might be thinking who's this guy who thinks he knows everything about course design I don't at all um, but I am the head reviewer over at TGC Tours I've been doing course design and stuff for many years um now a lot of course design is subjective and you know stuff you know design stuff that works in the real world doesn't sometimes doesn't quite carry over to the game so uh i'll try to kind of highlight what we're looking for what makes a what separates a not so great course from a good course to a great course and uh yeah that's the plan so the critiques are back these are kind of what made me i'm not even going to say famous because i'm not even close to that but people started noticing me on YouTube from these uh, course critique videos that I did way back in TGC1. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of excited to maybe get a few back going again. Now I'm not going to do like a hundred of them, but you know, here and there I'll do a few. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. So anyway, uh, let's take a look at Kimono Dunes. So we're going to do a little flyover first. A lot of people ask me, oh, how do you do this flyover? Unfortunately, you can only do it on PC. And if you are on PC, just press F10 and F11. So we're just going to do a quick kind of overview here of this golf course. we got a nice little setting here. The lighting is really nice. Um, so first thing that I kind of want to point out, and, you know, you're not going to see the... Well, we'll see if how much we see this, but um, it's these kind of duny bunkers. And they are all kinds of different shapes and styles and like this this looks vastly different from this it's just there's not a lot of you know consistency with these so um you know these these kind of dunesy bunkers are i wouldn't say they're overly great we'll have to look at the sculpting but uh yeah uh i don't know what these rocks are we'll we'll get to those but those are going to need a little bit of work uh, and then we've got some sort of interesting building with multiple clubhouses on them. I'm not sure what that is, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, first hole, opening par five. I really like the uh, the tee shot here. Um, I don't really like these in fairway bunkers too much. I kind of like a thinner layer of rough surrounding the bunkers, but you know, not all courses have that. And if it works well, it works well, but... Those are just kind of stock-shaped bunkers, just kind of thrown on the edge of the fairway just to make it a little bit narrower. You also got a lot of this, I call this kind of messy planting. So I'm not sure if this is just auto-generated planting that the designer just chose not to delete or what, but it just looks messy and it just looks like a, a golf course that's not really maintained very well. Um, so, you know, keep that stuff for, you know, outer areas where, you know, it's purposely supposed to be like that, but... You know, when it's close to the actual kind of playing area and it's not purposeful, it just looks messy. I'm going to be into one of these large waste bunkers. I feel like this is going to be a theme today. 
Well, this is a part four. I think I maybe said part five. So I'm noticing the sculpting on these bunkers are not great. Um, very inconsistent. That's the thing, like with a newer designer to take on this many bunkers is not the best idea. Um, you've got, yes, like this part of this bunker is almost vertical. You've got this bunker almost sticking up. This part of the bunker almost sticking up. The very inconsistent sculpting here. Uh, yeah. Alright, second shot in. Not bad. The green looks okay. We got that little uh little mound there in front of the pin. Green doesn't look too ridiculous or crazy. I'll try to hack it out here with the three iron. Get a bounce. Green shape a little bit weird. I don't know why it kind of plops out here, but look at that shot, by the way. We'll take it. I keep looking that way because I usually have my webcam that way, but I've changed it up today. We'll figure it out. Apologies. Now, this pin is a bit on a yellow slope. Um, that's not a huge deal. Usually, the yellow slopes were a big no-no in the old game just because they were almost sideways. They're okay. You can get away with a yellow slope in this game, but I don't like too many of them. There we go. We got it. So we got an opening par. All right, moving on. So yeah, a little bit of messy planting, how it's kind of leaking into the tee box there. Not a fan of that. Okay, short par four. Um, you know, I, I, I like this. We talked about those bunkers earlier. I think that's going to be a theme. I just don't like how they're just sitting in the fairway like that. I'm not a huge fan of that, but that's kind of a personal taste thing. Um, in terms of how this short par four plays, you know, I kind of like how this fairway is kind of, well, these bunkers are very well protecting going for the drive, but he does give us a little bit of a shot. And, you know, I kind of like this tier as well. So, uh, not a bad designed par four, I think. Sight line is pretty good again. Um, but yeah, I think just a lot of that messy planting. I'll try not to repeat that too many times, but it's definitely an issue. The sculpting of the fairway is not great, too. It is very wavy in some areas. We'll try to highlight some of those a little bit later. So, I mean, this is good. So, you know, you say short par four. I took a chance, hit driver, but I'm kind of punished, and now I've got just a menacing downhill putt here, 44 feet. I'm just going to try to get this somewhere in the right area code. Oh, hit the hole. Oh, it did. <laughs> it hit the hole. We called it. All right, we'll take our birdie. So we get to one under par. All right, some more messy planting in the back there. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of see how this is taking away a little bit from my view here, which would have been a great view of this fairway. I kind of like how it's making its way up the hill here. Uh, these bunkers a little bit better, I think. It, it almost just looks like the designer just kind of took the the bunker tool, spun it around, and created weird shapes. I mean, that's okay, but it can look a little crazy when you're getting very different looks on different holes. I like how this hole plays, though. Oh, that needs a bounce. It didn't get one. Maybe 190 in. Okay, nice overlook. In terms of the green sizing, um, I think they're pretty good so far. I don't see a overly gigantic or tiny green or anything like that. So that's always good. Hacking it out here. All right. Little flop shot. Great view of the bay there. I'm a sucker for the low lighting, obviously, but you know that can bite you going the other way. It's just super ugly coming back that way, so you really got to balance out your lighting for sure. Okay, we head to the first par four, and it is a monster at 642 yards. Uh, pretty wide open. Uh, again, a lot of that kind of dunesy stuff, but here, I mean, this is really sloppy. Like, this is 
that's almost an instant not approved in my book right there. Like that's that's not gonna fly. Uh, so you got to be really careful with that. New designers, just you know, I know you want to auto generate those plants and trees, but if you got them sitting on the fairway, just get rid of them. It's not hard. Hit that delete button, or just plant them all yourself. All right, big wide fairway. Not too challenging here. All right, a three shot par five. I always like to have an interesting second shot. And you know, I like how he's kind of cambered the fairway kind of down into these bunker kind of collection areas. So um, I wouldn't say that green is too exciting though. You've got kind of a, a you know big right to left slope and then it's pretty flat everywhere else. I don't know if I'd call that a super interesting green. But not a ton of challenge here, although I'm just firing it into this sand dune. So maybe some challenge. All right. Hack it out here. Needs to sit. Whoa, way too much. You'll notice on these critiques, every time I'll say something's not a challenge or something's easy, I'll immediately proceed to make it look very difficult. Just how it works. Just how it seems to work. Moving on to the fifth. Okay. Again, the bunkers are just all kinds of strange. I mean, I, to fix some of these, what would I... I would have probably just really planted the heck out of this. Okay. And I know a lot of... If you're a console designer, you hear the... Oh, the, you know, it's too slow to plant. Listen, I mean, if you've got a console you're, and you want a great-looking course, you have to put in the time to plant. Okay? You just have to. Yes, minimal planted courses can be pulled off, and they can be great, and they can be tour-worthy. But if the planting is messy and minimal, it's going to completely detract from the overall look. See, we got more grass leaking into the fairway here. Well, that's got to stop. Okay. So this green site's kind of nice right along the cliff here. But again, we're just kind of going with a bit of a mound at the top, but otherwise kind of flat. Bit of a ho-hum green. Okay. 29 footer. Yeah, I would say the green the green sites, the green site locations are okay, but I think the green complexes, what I mean by that's just like the green bunker, fringe, all that kind of area has just been kind of just there, I think, right now. Okay, our first par three. Uh, okay, so it's in the shadows a little bit, but with the low lighting, you're going to kind of expect that. Um... I don't I don't know what the need for to bring this in here for is. It just looks really strange. It's not even in play. Um yeah, not sure what that's about. Really big long really deep green. So yeah, this is going to play anywhere from 200 to 230. I'm you know, I'm okay with a, a larger style green. Real shame about the shadows though. Okay. Another big tip I have for new designers would be if someone does, you know, give you feedback or critique on a course, don't go fix don't fix it. Don't say, "Oh, I'm releasing it as version 2." Nobody cares. <laughs> no offense, but no one cares. There's so many courses, everyone's on to the next ones. Take that as, you know, on board for your next course and use it towards your next one. Don't try, don't build a version 1.5 of a course. That's, yeah, I don't know. Just, that's not a big, not a big fan of. Okay, these rocks, we have to talk about these rocks. Uh, and I'm just going to ask an easy question. Why? Why are these rocks here? I don't know why the designer felt to have these rocks here. I guess he was going for like a mountainy, rocky, but... You know, there's no real natural 
end point to these rocks. It's just like these big boulders just got picked up and dropped. It just, it doesn't kind of meld into the land at all. Yeah, he sunk the rocks in, but it just looks odd. Now, if you're doing big rock formations like that, you kind of want to plant around it. Otherwise, it just looks incredibly artificial. So, really not a fan of that look, unfortunately, but... Uh, this would have been a beautiful tee shot, but again, whatever's going on with this planting, and this land could have been brought down about 5-10 feet, and you got a an A-plus tee shot, but because of that, it's down to a D, unfortunately. Okay, we're off 510 yards, but it is down the hill, so it's going to play a lot shorter. Okay. Yeah, these greens are just kind of like they're they're not they're not crazy bat poorly sculpted. They're just kind of very meh. Not much going on to them. Not really a lot of strategy to like. Oh, maybe you need to hit to this spot, have it funnel down. It's just kind of there's the putting surface. Hit to it. There we go. And we're in for, I think, a par. Mm -hmm. All right, let's head to the eight hole. All right, this is a nice looking hole. Again, um, sight line ruined by all of this. And, you know, a lot of people, I see a lot of people arguing, saying, oh, blind tee shots are part of the game. Yeah, they absolutely are, but if they're done on purpose, this is not done on purpose, this is just a bit on the sloppy side so um, otherwise this is a bit more of an interesting green uh, no reason for that bunker to be there to be quite honest uh, yeah I don't know why that green that bunker there is even a thing okay this looks pretty good Ooh, take it. Oh, I missed. No, I didn't. Okay, I thought I missed it. Second birdie of the day. Heading to nine, and wow. Okay, so we're now we're getting into kind of sizing inconsistencies. It's okay to have wide fairways and narrow fairways on the same course, but... I mean, if we go back to that big par 5, and then, like, this is I very tight. Very, very tight. Um, yeah, you know, I don't mind the uphill look. We're going to find the fairway easily, but I'd say that's a little bit narrow. And then you're left with a bit of a, a bit of a miss second shot. So again, you know, you've got a a wedge to work with. Yeah, like sand wedge. But even, you know, even this deep a green, the longest you're going to play in is a nine iron. So I feel like the green doesn't need to be that deep on a hole like this, especially when you got a short club in. That's not a good shot. <laughs> just all this extra vegetation is just driving me up the wall. It's like, why don't you just delete these grasses? Just get rid of them. All right. Anyway, these are critiques. I'm trying to be constructive. I don't want to be mean or anything. So hopefully people don't see me coming across as a, a mean guy. I'm just trying to help. Uh, okay. Again, that's just a bunker to be a pain in the butt bunker out at 295 in the middle of the fairway. I mean... I don't see any reason why I could be anywhere left of this fairway or right of it. I've got a 296 club, so I'm just going to bomb it over anyway. Um, yeah, and then just, you know, thinking if this were a real course, for example, how is such golfer getting from the fairway up to the green? Are they walking through the sand? You know, maybe you could make a little bridge or you know, a little footpath or you know, a break in the sand, something like that. I, those are super minor, but... There are things that are looked for in terms of realism and immersion.
But yeah, I mean, a lot of course design is subjective, and our reviewers over at TGC Tours are absolute rock stars. They are, have the most thankless job on that website. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, they're just doing their best. We're not taking every course. You know, some people may think we're a little tough, but we're trying to make you better in the long run. When I first started, it took me a eight courses, I think, to finally get on the database. So you know, don't expect to get on there with your first one all the time. Okay, again, this is another poll that does not really make sense to me. You've got 200 yards in the middle of just wasteland here. I don't know where the golfer is necessarily walking. Again, it's a video game. Who cares? But still something to think about. You've got two bunkers right up here. I have no idea why these are needed. Uh, just get rid of them. Bit of a head scratcher, this hole. Not sure what's going on here. Right. And now I've got a kind of a, a blind second shot. Not a terrible blind second shot, but... Uh, I'm going to miss there. Go off to the side. No, I don't love this hole. I don't have much nice to say about it here. It's just a very odd idea. Very odd idea. We made birdie. Okay. Heading to the 12th. Here's those big rocks starting to show up. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, all this bunker is doing is just, it's technically just shrinking the fairway. Because there's no way I can land it right in the fairway here. Okay? If you're going to put a cross bunker in, okay, give the golfer at least an option to land it on the left and the right of it, or short or long. Otherwise, all you're doing is you're just pinching off the fairway, even though there's extra fairway here. Like, this is useless fairway right here. No point in having it. We're going to try to steer clear of that. And we do. Okay, so this is this is an example of a blind shot that doesn't need to be blind, I don't think. I think this could be just brought down a little bit. Maybe the green raised up just a tad. The green's just kind of... It's almost just like it's sagging into the ground. It's just... There's not much going on at that green. I've just noticed that in the green sites in general. Ooh, close. But, you know, I mean, the sculpting of the greens in terms of playability, they're fine. They're just kind of boring. Three birdies in a row, though. Okay, we've got an uphill par four. I mean, we don't really have too much of an aiming marker there. Just a whole bunch of sand and grass and again i just don't i i'm just puzzled by the these in these cross bunker in fairway bunkers i just don't understand the placement of these at all uh why don't you just put it over here i don't know just i don't i don't get it i think they're just there to collect balls but they just look very strange positioned where they are i think just the positioning could be a lot better Get going. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, boy. Now we're in trouble. I love a good 74-foot putt. Try to get it close. That's pretty good. Tap in the par. Okay, 221. A little par 3. No sight line here at all. Again, another blind shot. It's not a terrible blind shot. It's not like a... It seems like it's purposeful. I don't know. Hard to say, but... Very uninteresting shot here. Especially at 221. Okay. 
And we'll try to get it down there. I do like the downslope green there, so kind of land it short, let it roll on. So, you know, I, I do like that little slope here for this pin. Just a bit too much. But, uh, yeah, again, just a very relatively flat, lifeless green there. That's a pretty easy birdie putt. Oh, we're going to get a highlight because we putted from the fringe. Man, love it. And there's a little blade of grass in the fairway just to troll me again. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got a beast here. It's another 600 plus yard hole. Way down the hill, though. It just, these, this sculpting is just not, that just looks not very good at all, so... Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of these waste bunker or whatever things overall on this course, so. Something that the designer probably needs to work on or maybe just avoid for the next course. Because it's kind of detracting from, from the course. Down the hill. Okay, try to hit this little 47 yarder. Could be okay. Needs to get going. Yeah, we'll take that. Ooh, bingo. Got it. Our crush in the back nine here. As we have three holes remaining, another big downhill shot here. Uh, yeah, I feel like, yeah, maybe moving this tee box up a little bit might show off that sight line a little bit more. Um, good size fairway, I would say. Yeah, this isn't a terrible tee shot. I can tell I'm going to have issues with the green, though. So, dark, flat... Grass right up to it, just not another just kind of lifeless green complex. I definitely suggest the de designer just take a look at some different green complexes, you know, of real life courses and you know, courses in the game. Just get some extra ideas because I just feel like this that this is part of the course that's definitely lacking a bit. Are the green sites? Like, this is a gigantic green again. So some sizing issues, mostly on the big side. All right, the par 317th. I mean, this is a bit close to this green, I would say. <laughs> Especially, you know, if this were a real course. Having someone here, eh, it wouldn't exactly work out that great, so... This hole almost looks like it was just kind of wedged in or that he wanted to take advantage of the rocks. And a bit of a forced, I, yeah, I not, a bit of a forced looking green sculpting here. I do not like this where it slopes that way and that way. I think that's almost like reminds me of a miniature golf course. Um, you don't see a ton of those in real life, but hit the hill. Oh, it did. Okay, I'll take that. And boom. Got it. Alright, we are crushing this course. Alright, heading to the last hole. I want a good last hole. Fortunately, those rocks are going to be an issue. I don't know what's going on with that clubhouse there. It's kind of silly. Yeah, okay. Not much to write home about on this 18th. Same problems we've kind of been talking about. <clears throat> Yeah, and then another just really flat second shot. I don't need a ton of elevation, but at least show me the green or part of it. And down the hill. And boom, we are in. I think we did pretty well. Nine under 62 at uh, Kimono Ridge. So there is kind of our first critique back, and I think that was a good one because this course was, you know, designer knows what they're doing. Um, but definitely just some 
playability things, some a lot of sculpting things, sizing issues. Um, you know, just planting messiness. I mean, I, I don't I didn't look this one up on TGC Tours if it's even been submitted or what. Uh for me, I probably would not accept this one. It would be close, but I probably would say no. But uh the designer has potential, I think. So it's not uh I would just you know, maybe if you want to take a few things, um Hopefully it'll help you towards your next course. But uh, again, I don't know everything, but uh, hopefully a few of things, what I, what I said, might help you. So anyway, that has been an episode of Canucks Course Critiques. Let me know what you guys think of these. Leave me comments below. And um, yeah, just let me know. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one.